Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Rady and you're watching my channel, Rady the Brand. Today, we're going to build a fully responsive landing page using Bootstrap. And I just wanted to mention that Bootstrap is still one of the most popular CSS frameworks out there that can help us with fast prototyping, accessibility, usability, a lot of components and responsive design, I guess. There is a lot to it. Let's jump on the computer and get started. Welcome everybody and let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is create a new project folder and I'm going to call this Gorilla Coffee. Just like so. Let's open this folder and this is where we're going to be creating our project files. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code as this is what I'm going to be using today for my code editor, but you can use whatever you wish. So I'm going to go into File, Open Folder, and I'm going to open the folder that we just created. Here is the folder, select, and this should open the project here on the left side of the Explorer. By the way, you can open and close the Explorer by doing Ctrl and B, just like so. And if you're Mac, obviously you have to do Command and B. And that's it. I've zoomed in quite a bit just so you can see a little bit better. And one thing that I want to mention before we start is that I will be using an extension. So if you click on extensions, uh, the extension that I will be using is called the live server. And the reason I like to use this extension is because every time we make a change on a website, it's going to automatically refresh the page for us, which is great. So it saves us a little bit of time. You don't have to have it, but it's really nice. I'm going to close this and remove the extensions, go to the Explorer, and we can start creating our project files. So let's start by creating the folders. So I'm going to have a CSS folder for style sheets. I'm going to have an images folder, and I'm going to shorten this with three letters IMG for images. And then I'm going to create our main HTML file, which is going to be the front page of our website. So this is going to be called index.html, just like so. Now let's create the CSS for this project. I'm going to have a custom CSS style sheet for everything that we do. And also we're going to include Bootstrap from CDN in a second. So let's create a new style sheet and this is going to be called main.css. Feel free to name it whatever you like. So main.css. That's absolutely fine. And for the images, I've already prepared some images from my design here in Figma. Basically, all of the images inside here come from unsplash.com. They will be linked in the description below if you'd like to check them out. And I've already exported those images as JPEGs. So I'm going to copy and paste them into my project. So let me copy. Let's open the images folder by right click, reveal in file explorer. And I'm going to copy the images inside here. And that's it. I will actually also use a video for this tutorial. So I'm going to copy this as well. And I can either paste it inside the images. Let's paste it in here actually. I think that would be fine. So this video comes from Pixels and it will be linked in the description below as well. And we'll link that later on as well. All right, let's close this as we won't need it anymore. And here are the images and the videos that we just pasted. We can now open the index.html with the live server by clicking right click, open with live server, and this should open the browser for us. As you can see, the page is empty, but it seems to be working. And now we can start building our page. Let's do some of the scaffolding. So we're going to do a very basic HTML. We're going to test, we're going to link the style sheet, test it out, and then we will jump to Bootstrap. So I'm going to close the Explorer here just so it doesn't get in the way. And I'm going to be using a lot of shortcuts in this tutorial, starting with writing HTML and the Emmet abbreviation is going to help me out and save me a few seconds. So I'm going to choose HTML5 in here. And this is a very simple HTML5 document. I'm going to change the title super quickly. So coffee, so Gorilla Coffee, like so. And let's just put something like Gorilla, Gorilla Coffee, like so, just so we can test it. Save this. Let's go to the website, refresh. 
sometimes I think the first time you might have to refresh and after that every time it should be automatic but as you can see we have Gorilla Coffee in here which is fine okay let's link our style sheet first of all I'm talking about the style sheet that we just created inside here inside CSS and the title here we can do link select link CSS and then replace this so we remove this and we do CSS slash main dot CSS and this is how we link our style sheet so I'm gonna put a comment here main main style sheet like so and then let's quickly test this out so what I'm gonna do is change the background color super quickly let's go to main dot CSS and let's type something like body and then background color of anything like so black will do let's go back to the website and as you can see it automatically refreshed for me i didn't have to refresh the browser and we get a black background i actually don't want this but that was just a quick test so i'm going to remove this save it let's go back to or index.html and let's link bootstrap so i'm going to go back to the browser let me close this folder as well go to getbootstrap.com and click on get started before we do this i just wanted to mention that as of now the version is on 5.1.3 and of course if you're watching this in future things might change slightly but hopefully there won't be any big breaking changes anytime soon so let's click on get started and there are multiple ways of including bootstrap but today i'm gonna do it with the cdn here which is the fastest and easiest way so i'm gonna copy this and this needs to go inside or head element so let's go back and paste this somewhere around here so i'm gonna leave it there let's go to view world wrap because i've zoomed in so much we don't have so much space let me comment this as well just so we know what it is so this is bootstrap style sheet style sheet like so and save this let's go back to the bootstrap website and let's also get the javascript and I'm going to get this one here. So the reason we're getting the JavaScript is because if you want to use any of the components functionality, such as pop-ups, uh, toggles, uh, navigation, and so on, we need the JavaScript. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this under here, just above the body tag. So let's paste it in here. And maybe we can comment this as well, just so we're consistent. So bootstrap js like so let's save this and if the styles are working now we should see a change in the font as you can see the font i don't know if you remember what it looked like but the font has changed now this is the default bootstrap font which will actually change in a second as well but as you can see bootstrap is working and another way you can find out whether it's working is if you right click inspect and let's say we inspect this h1 tag here you will see that in the styles panel here, if we scroll down, if we zoom in and scroll down, you will see that we're getting all the bootstrap styles in here popping up, the root colors and so on. So you can actually use this to reference stuff if you want to overwrite something, which we will do in a second. But yeah, you get all of them in here. Uh, you get the bootstrap font, sans serif, the monospace, the body font family and so on so there is a lot that you can use from here if you wish to and obviously you have everything in the documentation as well so i'm going to close this zoom out just like so and let's start by changing some of the default bootstrap styles just so it suits the style that we are going for so i'm going to go back to visual studio coding here i'm going to click on main.css and let's change a couple of things so first of all i want to change some of the variables so what we can do is column root and then add some of the variables that i want to change so first of all i want to change the primary color to do this i can do primary dash color and then i can put the color in here so this will be so the color that i'm going to go for is 0a1118 uh, which is almost like a dark bluish kind of tint of a color it's pretty nice i don't want it to be fully black and then for the highlights i'm gonna do primary color and then i'm gonna put highlight and i'm gonna put a color of hash 233 d54 which is kind of like a lighter version of this i probably won't use that too much but it will be nice to have later on 
And for the body, I don't want the body to be fully white. So what I'm going to do is BS body dash BG. This is a bootstrap one that I'm overwriting again. So I'm going to do hash FB F9 F6. And this is going to be a very creamy white color. And then I just want to change the bootstrap font family to Montserrat. So to do this, I'm going to do dash dash bootstrap body font and then family like so. And this is going to be Montserrat, which I'm going to have to get from Google in a second. Montserrat like so. And this is going to be sans serif like so. Let's get this font super quickly. So I'm going to copy this, go back to the browser, search for Montserrat font and it comes up with Google font in here. And the one that I want, and I actually only want two weights of this font. And the first one is going to be the 400, which is this one here. So regular 400, I'm going to, oh, I've already selected it. I think this is because I was using it earlier. So I've, I want this one here, the 400. And also I want the bold 700. And when you click on here, this will actually generate the script for you. So you can either copy the link from here or you can import it into your style sheet. I'm just going to copy the link, go to index.html and we can paste it somewhere in here. Maybe I can comment this as well, like so. And this is going to be Google Fonts, like so. Okay. Okay. We should be good to go and start developing the website now. As you can see, the font actually has changed. The background color is no longer white. It's a little bit creamy. And let's start building the header. So let me first of all show you the design and just so it makes a little bit more sense what we are doing. First of all, I'm going to concentrate on the header of this website, which is only going to be this part here. And this, this header is literally going to have two elements, the logo and a menu. And basically we're going to need a little bit of space from the top and left here and also right here for the menu. So let's concentrate on that first of all, and then we'll move on. One thing that I wanted to mention is that we are going to develop everything from mobile first, working our way up to tablet, uh, laptop screens, and desktop. So let's remove this and let's start writing our header. So for the header, we don't have to comment everything, but I think it's going to be nice. So I'm going to do a little comment here, header start. And once we finish it, I'm going to close it somewhere below. And to build a header, I can use the HTML5 element header like so. And then this opens it and closes for me, which is great. And I'm going to have to add a few classes. Now, what I like doing is I like to give each section a class, even if I don't use it. It just describes what the section actually does. And it's very easy to pick up the class and style it from it. And also I will be using BEM in this tutorial, which is a CSS methodology. And I'm going to show you how, but I'm not going to follow it super strictly and you don't have to do it the way I do it. All right, let's give it the class name of header. So we are super descriptive of what this is. And we can actually use this class to style additional stuff inside this section as well. And then I want to add a little bit of padding from the left, top, right, and bottom. So I can just use P-3 and this will give my header a padding of one rem on each side. So left, top, right, and bottom. Then I want this header to be positioned absolutely because this is actually going to go on top of my hero image. And to do this, there are two ways of doing it. We can either use the bootstrap classes or we can use the header, put in our style sheet and style it from there. Either way is fine. We can actually mix them if you wish. Let me show you how we might do it with, with the bootstrap classes. So I could use position dash absolute and I can position it the way I like. We are a little bit restricted with the position of bootstrap. But for the, what I'm doing right now, we can actually make this work really well. So what I want to do, I want the header to be positioned from, from the left side of zero. So this will be start dash zero. And then I want it to be positioned top zero. And I want it to be positioned to the right of zero, which is end zero. Save this, but because this is positioned absolute, I'm going to need a Z index as well. So now maybe I can use this class to actually style the Z index. So I'm going to copy this 
I'm going to go to main.css and I'm going to leave it inside here, header, and maybe just put Z index of two, for example. And of course, I could have typed the position absolute in here as well. And I could have changed the top left right position on here as well. It's a preference, but of course, I think that you have a lot more power to do it from the style sheet because literally uh, the options on here are endless while these are already predefined and you can only use so many of them. Let me show you. So if you go to the bootstrap and we say position, as you can see, so not this position, position values maybe. Okay, that's it. So as you can see, we have a couple of values in here, but they might not be enough for every situation. So that's why sometimes it might be best to just write your CSS. But in this situation, we are good. So let's go back and now let's add the logo and the button. In order to do this, I'm actually going to add another diff inside it with the class name of the dash flex. And what this does is basically it converts the diff into a flex box. So we can use all the flex box styles such as the justify and align. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So I want to basically push the Lego to be on the left side and I want to push the navigation to be on the right side. So I'm going to do justify dash content between. And I want to also make sure that the logo and the button are in the middle of the div. So to do this, I can do align dash items dash center like so. Close this and obviously close the divs here. Let's tidy things up and now we can add the logo. So for the logo, I'm just going to use a link, a href, and this is going to be slash because this is our homepage. So every time we click on the logo, it's just going to go to the homepage and we can give it a class name because this is a link. I don't want it to be underlined and I don't actually have a logo. I'm just going to write it with text. So I'm going to do text decoration dash none. I don't want it to be underlined. I want the text to be white so we can do text white and in fact we could have done it on the probably the one above but that should be fine as well and we can do font size of five which should technically make the font slightly bigger and then i'm gonna make it bold as well so font weight dash bold okay let's type the logo now gorilla coffee like so and just make sure that your link is closed if we go to the website, refresh, it's very hard to see because the logo is white at the moment, but it's here, it's working. We have the space everywhere, which is good. And now let's create the button. Because we're using a flex box for the button, I'm going to create it in another div. So I'm going to do a div and then I'm going to insert the button in here. All right. So this is going to be a button, but because I want to trigger the, let's call it native bootstrap navigation, we're going to have to do quite a bit of work in here. So first of all, I can actually add an icon in here or you can style it with CSS, whatever you prefer. I'm going to add an icon. So I'm going to go back to Bootstrap and let's go to icons. Let's click on Bootstrap icons actually. And if you scroll down a little bit, you should see this Bootstrap, where is it? Learn more about Bootstrap icons. They should probably make this a little bit more visible, I guess. It's always really hard to find this, but it's here. Learn more about Bootstrap icons. And you can either install this or you can grab it with CDN and you'll be able to use all of those icons really easily. So if I scroll down to the bottom, actually, you will see that we can literally either use SVGs or we can use it like this. If you wanted to use it like this, we're going to have to include the icons to our website. To do this, scroll down is pretty much at the bottom where it says install. You can literally grab the CDN link from here. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my index.html and I can maybe leave it in here. So I'm going to say bootstrap icons. You don't have to do that. Uh, be you don't have to do that because most of the icons, I think you can use as SVG as well. So let me show you one with SVG and I'm going to do the other ones with icons. So this one, let's go to the search at the top. Let's have a look. So this one is going to be menu. I think that this one is going to do the job. So let's click on the list. And as you can see, I can either copy this now 
and this is going to work or I can just copy the SVG from here and this should work as well. So I can copy this, go back to my button, paste it like so and save. If I go back, hopefully you'll see it in here. As you can see, I mean, it's not styled that twice a little bit, but I think it's working. So it will work in a second. Let me zoom in. As you can see, the icon is here, which is all good. Obviously the button is not styled yet, but I'm going to do that right now. And in fact, what we can do because we're uh, starting from mobile first i can put this on the right side maybe zoom out a little bit maybe a lot more uh let's do this let's see if this is gonna work okay i think this is gonna work okay so we have a button there so let's have a look at how we can actually make this button work so what we're gonna have to do so we can give it a class name of nabba toggler and by the way this is all coming from the bootstrap documentation i know i'm not making it up and obviously i'm giving it a little bit of style by myself so let's give it a text white like so. And as you can see, it's gone now. Maybe we should have changed the background color to something else. So let's give it a style of background color. And I'm just going to put black for now. This is just for now, just so we can see our remove in a bit. We are zoomed in quite a lot as well. Just have that in mind. The text white seems to be working. Then we need to set this to be a type of button. In order to make this button to work and to toggle the navigation, we're going to have to do the following. So data BS toggle equals collapse. And then we can do data BS dash target. And this is going to be the target that we actually open. This is going to be our menu that it's going to slide down. And I'm going to make this in a second as well. So the target is going to be called, let's call it, let's call it navbar like so. It's also nice to have some area controls and this is mainly for accessibility and this is all going to work from bootstrap as well. So we might as well do it. It makes things a lot better. So area dash controls equals, and then I just need to grab this navbar equals navbar like so. And then let's see what else do we have. We have area expanded equals false. So the default value of our menu is false because it's not expanded. So when we open the website, we don't want the menu to be expanded. That's why uh, we set it to false. And also the screen readers will know that the, the navigation is not expanded. But when you toggle between it, this will change to true and the screen reader will tell that it's now expanded, which is awesome. And finally, let's give it an area label. And this is going to be equals to toggle. Toggle navigation like so, maybe with smaller end. Okay, this is pretty much all button done. Obviously, when we click on it now, nothing is going to happen. And I am zoom zoomed in so much. I'm zoomed in a lot, but it is super tiny. But it is super tiny. So what I'm going to do is change the width to be somewhere around 36 and the height to be around 36. So it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, this is so much better. Okay, when we press on this now, nothing is really happening. And this is because we don't actually have the menu. And we could potentially do it now and then focus on the rest. So we might as well, this is the header done. So what I'm gonna do is copy this and paste it underneath here. And I'm gonna say header end. That's it, we're, we're done with the header. We're not gonna mess anymore with it. And let's do the flyout menu now. All right, let's now focus on the actual drop down menu. And in order to make this work, it's actually fairly simple. We can now use this navbar ID that we created here and put it on pretty much any div, and that would make it work. So, what I mean is, let's create a nav with the ID. So ID of navbar in here, and this will now actually work. So if you were to go the standard way and do a UL with, let's say, a few lists, and then inside each list, you have a link. Don't do this, by the way, I just want to show you. So we have link one. Well, feel free to do whatever you like, obviously. Uh, we have link two, link four. This is how you normally do uh, a navigation, and then you style it. Now, at this point, the reason that we're not seeing these ones is because this is positioned as absolute on top of it. And that's why I created a few more just so you can see them. So this is all working. And if we make a little experiment here and we press the 
navigation button, you will see that something is happening. It is toggling up and down, but it's not working as it should. And the reason for this is because we need to add a couple of classes on here to make this work. Now, the default behavior of this is that this is actually hidden. And when we press the button, it appears. At the moment, because we don't have those bootstrap classes, it's shown. So let me show you how this is going to work. So what we have to do is add a couple of classes. So let's do collapse. The next one is nav, nav bar dash collapse and then drop down nav like so. If we save this, you will see that they're all gone. And if I click on this, it's appearing. So the links are appearing just like so. And the default behavior of this navigation is now working, which is great. Now, technically speaking, we can start styling this and make it work the way we want. So what I'm going to do is I can either use one of them class names to style it, or I can just use the ID. I'm going to use the ID for this one just because I don't want to be adding uh, any more classes. And I'm going to go to the main style sheet and do it in here. So this is going to be hash and then navbar like so. But we need to stay organized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this above this here, and I'm going to say this is our main header like so and close it. This is a little bit better. I'm going to copy this and paste it here on the navbar. And I'm going to say main or just like navigation bar. That would do. Or maybe we can make it a little bit more specific. Fly out navigation bar. Now I can style this the way I want. And what I want to achieve here is when I press the button, I want the navigation bar to go full screen from top to bottom, left to right. I want to change the background color just so we can see something is happening. And I think that's pretty much it. Let's have a look at how we can do that. So on the navbar, let's do the position as fixed because I want, even if uh, somehow we scroll down, I want the menu to always stay on top. So let's do position fixed. Then we go left zero, top zero, right zero, and bottom zero clockwise, bottom zero like so. And we're good to go. And let's give it a background color. So background color of something like RG, RGB. And this is going to be 255, 247, and then 231, which should be a very creamy white color, as you can see, like so. And now if we were to open this, you will see that the navigation is opening, but it's still below this here, which is not what I want. Now I could move in a few pixels from the top, but I actually want it to be on top of this. So what I'm going to do is just give it a Z index of four for now. And as you can see, this is now on top, which is great. So if I'm just going to refresh, it's a little bit weird how it stops here, but I think I know how to fix this. I think the animation stops around here and then it continues. And this is because I think that the JavaScript looks at the height of this and it wants to stop. But then I've done this as position fixed to the bottom zero and then it's continuing and it's making the animation a little bit worse. But we'll fix this in a second. So the next thing that I want to do actually is let's create the closing button. So for the close button, we can actually copy the one from here from above. So this one here, button. Uh, we can paste it somewhere around the bottom. Uh, we'll have to change this in a bit anyway, but here we go. We have the navbar. Obviously, I want to change the SVG to something else. So let me have a look. So let's go to Bootstrap super quickly, open it, and let's go to something like close. Uh, I think this one is going to do the job. So I can just copy the SVG, go back and paste it in here. Hopefully, so hopefully now if I click on this, uh, we can't see it just yet. I think it's because we might need to style this a little bit. So let me show you how we can do that. So this button needs to be, let's have a look. First of all, let's use this class name just to make it a little bit more specific and give it to the button. So I'm going to do drop down nav and then underscore underscore, and I'm going to call this one close nav button like so. So this is super specific now and I can go back to my CSS and I can do dot drop down dash nav and then underscore underscore and then close nav btn like so and target it. So for this, 
For this, I want to make sure that this is positioned absolute. I want to make sure that the top is set to 20 pixels and I want it around 16 pixels to the right. And I also want to change the background color to something else just in case uh, it's hard to see. I'm going to show you in a second. So this is going to be our GB A255. 255, 255, and I'm going to put the opacity to 0 0.6. So this is white with a little bit of opacity as a background color. And let me have a look whether we can see it. Yes, it's here, but I think we need to change the color of it. So to change the color, maybe we can just remove the text white from here. Let's have a look. Save. Okay, that's working, but obviously it's tiny. So I'm going to change the size from 16 to 36 and then 36 save and here it is the button in here it's looking great i can close it open close and that's it so this is how the navigation could work feel free to style this if you wish but i'm going to do something else i want to make it look a little bit better and this is going to be a tricky bit i think so let me remove all of this and i want to wrap first of all everything in a fluid container there are different sizes of containers. I think if we do a class container, they are, and I, and I want to wrap pretty much everything. Uh, I could wrap the button as well, I guess. Yeah, let's wrap the button as well. So everything is inside this container. And let me show you about the containers. So if we go back to bootstrap, bootstrap, get started, search for container. As you can see, we have different containers in here. So we have a small one, medium one, large, Excel, XXL and Fluid. So the Fluid one is pretty much always 100%. And the biggest one, which is the large one here, stops at 1320, which might not be enough for my layout. So I might have to create a custom one in a minute. So I'm going to use the Fluid one because it's always 100%. Let's do that. I think that's going to work well. So let me go to container-fluid. And inside this container is where I'm going to be wrapping pretty much everything. So I'm going to actually create a row. Okay, let's create a new row. And inside this row, we're going to create a few columns, but I want them to be aligned items to the start. So align items start. And I'm not putting the flex on this one because as default rows is set to flex. Now inside here, I'm going to create a column. Let me tidy this up a little bit. So let's create a column. So call. And now for the small screens, we usually start with column. So for the small screens, I want this column to take the full width of the screen. And this is 12. Now, after this, we have uh, small, we have medium, large, and so on. So on slightly larger screens, on the next breakpoint, I want the column to be actually set to four because we have 12, 12 columns in Bootstrap, uh, four plus four, and I'm going to have three columns, four plus four plus four equals 12. It's going to make sense in a minute. So as a default, we're going to have 12 columns and above this media query, let's do call dash small. I want it to be four and this is going to work in a minute. You will see how it works. And in fact, we could potentially test it now. So I could put call Okay, let's do it. Let's test it now just so you can see what's going to happen. So, for example, call one, and I can duplicate this one, two, here we go, call two, and call three. So, this is what we're trying to achieve. And let me see how this works. I'm going to pop this out. Let's open the navigation. And as you can see, we have column one in here, column two in here, and column three. Now, watch what happens when we go down to small. As you can see, they're all stacking. So this is taking 12, this is taking 12, and this is taking 12. If I go that, if I go up, as you can see, they're now stacking. So this is how we do the responsive layout. And of course, you can have, you can change it on larger screens and so on. I think this is gonna do a wonderful job for me, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. Let's build the links inside it. I know that I'm not using an unordered list in here, but this allows me to style things a little bit better. So I'm going to do it this way. So let's do an A href. And this is where your link will go at the moment because we're doing a dummy website. I'm just going to do hash. So it's not a broken link. And then I'm going to put a class of row here. 
and I'm going to remove any of the text decoration because this is a link. I don't want the text to be underlined. So text decoration equals none. And I put that as a row, which means it's a flex box. That's cool. So let's close this. And inside the link, I'm going to create a column. Just like here, we can actually nest columns. It's not a problem at all. We can nest them as much as we want. So inside this row, I'm going to create another column. So let's do a, a div with the class name of col. And this is going to start with two. So this is going to be a tiny little column on mobile. And the reason for this is because I want the image to be tiny and I want the text to take the rest of the space. I mean, we can make it a little bit bigger. We'll see in a second. And then on slightly bigger screens, I can do co small, and then that could be 12 because I want the image to be full screen. And then let's add a little bit of margin to the bottom to push the text, which we'll have in a second. So this is where my image is going to go. I can create the image by doing IMG and then source and and let's add my first image in here, which is going to be one coffee flavor. I've uh, numbered them quite nicely. Let's put an old tag, which is going to be coffee flavor, something like this. And then this image, I want it to be fluid. So, so I'm going to do class of IMG dash fluid. We have the old text in there. Also, it would be nice to put the width and the height of the image. So let's do width. And this one, I'm going to have to do control and click on this. And this is one five, five, three, seven, four, six. Okay. So five, five, three, and then height seven, four, six. And that's it. What else am I missing? Maybe we can do it as loading lazy as well. And that's it. That's all image. Let me have a look how it looks. Here it is. It's a tiny little image in here, but I think it's going to look pretty cool. We'll see, we'll see. And then for the next bit, I want a little bit of text underneath here. So I'm going to do another call. This one is going to take 10. Let's have a look if this is going to work. And inside this, and I'm going to say amazing flavor. And then I'm going to copy a little bit of text inside a paragraph. So let me copy that. So I'm just going to say something like find out about or amazing flavor. And then at the end, I'm just going to say with another paragraph, I'm going to say learn more. And I'm going to put an icon here with an arrow. So let me go to bootstrap. Um, I should have kept that open. Okay. So, so arrow, uh, the one that I want, maybe this one short arrow, and I can just use this from here because we included the library earlier. I'm going to paste in here. The reason I'm not doing the learn more as a link is because the whole bit is a link. So no matter whether you're clicking on the image or the text anywhere, I want the whole bit to be a link. So that's pretty much it in here. I hope this works. Save. Let's go and have a look. Okay. This is actually the way I wanted it. Maybe that needs to be moved down a little bit. Maybe I can do it on here. I'm not so sure margin top or four. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that will work. Okay, this is looking good. One thing that I spotted is that the link color is still the default bootstrap one, which I definitely want to change, but we're going to do that in a second. So what I'm going to do now is let's do a quick experiment and copy this column. So this is going to be copied two times. One, two, save it and let's see how it looks. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. And now if I open this on desktop super quickly, and if I open it, yes, that's exactly what I wanted. All right, that's looking pretty good. Maybe I just want to center this a little bit because we have a little bit more space to the right side. So let me have a look what I've missed. Um, so on this one here, maybe we can do it as the flex, display as flex, and then align items center. I think that this might do the job. Let me test it out. Nope. Okay, and the reason for this is because the actual columns are taking, uh, are taking a little bit. The actual columns are now taking the full width, which is absolutely fine to be fair. I mean, what I could do is either change the container to be XXL, which is kind of like the biggest one available there, unless we create our own one. All right. I think that this is going to work. I'm not sure whether to make it a little bit bigger, but also if you remember this jaggedy 
animation here where it stops. We can fix this and we potentially we can move this to the bottom by giving this uh, the container fluid, which is this one. Oh, it's not fluid anymore. The container XXL now. We can give this a height of 100 VH and I think that might do the job. It may be a little bit of pattern. Let's have a look. So I wonder whether to name this. Let's say, uh, let's do, let's give it a name just in case I change the container again. So drop down nav underscore underscore container. This one I'm going to call it. Let me copy this. Let's go to the style sheet and let's do drop down nav container. And inside here, I'm going to give it a height of 100 VH. Hopefully this will sort out the animation problems. And let's add a little bit of padding to uh, left and right zero and top and bottom one rem. I hope that this works. So we do this, boom, it's in the middle. I mean, I don't know if I prefer them a little bit bigger. Maybe I can mess around with this. So if I was to change it back to fluid, where is it? Container fluid, boom. Uh, I don't know, I don't know which one I prefer. So I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave it as container XSL and let's move on. All right, now let's quickly change the default links on here. Oh. Okay, so one thing that I spotted just now is that these elements are now in the center and this is because I changed the align item center. So what I can do is I can set align items to start for mobile and for the rest I can do align items, maybe medium or small center. And now we have these at the top here. And if I open this on desktop, let's say, and we open it, this is centered. That's it. So let's change the links now everywhere on the whole website. And I'm going to do this in the style sheet at the top. I should have done this maybe at the start. It doesn't really matter, I guess. To change the links, what I'm going to do is put A and then inside here, we can just put color and I'm going to put the var color of the primary color, like so, which we have in here. And that's it. This is going to be, this is going to be a very dark color. And for the hover, we can do exactly the same. So I can duplicate this by holding Alt, Shift and down. And I can do hover and I can change the color to whatever I like. I'm just going to leave it as it is for now. And that's it. So if we go back, here we go. The links are now black, which is awesome. And the text also, because this entire thing is a link. Okay, cool. Let's now focus on the header. This is going to be the next tricky bit. So for the header, let's go back to index.html. Let's scroll down. Let's tidy things up because it's getting messy. And let's make it inside here. Okay. All right. First of all, for the hero, let's remove this uh, black color here that we added earlier. That was only for testing purposes. So I'm going to remove it super quickly, like so. Save it. Obviously, it's hard to see now, but that's absolutely fine. And because we're going to put our hero. So for the hero, let's quickly finish this, by the way. So this is going to be fly out navigation start, like so. Let me copy this and let's end it here. Okay, let's quickly build the hero section now. This is probably going to be the most interesting part of this video. And let me quickly show you what we're going to do. So if I pull up Figma super quickly, so we're going to have a couple of things. So I want the section to be full screen all the time, no matter whether it's mobile or desktop. I'm going to have a little overlay on top of the video. And this is basically going to let us kind of like make the video darker or lighter, depending on the video, the text might not be readable. And that's why we're going to have a small overlay. And then we're obviously going to have the heading, a little bit of a paragraph, a button, and this explore button here, which is also going to work. And it's going to send you to the second section, which we'll build later on. So let's start building this. So what I'm going to do is inside the HTML, I'm going to grab a comment super quickly and put it in here. Let's say hero start like so. And then I'm going to start creating the hero section. So this is going to be a section element. And for this section element, I'm going to add a class name of hero just so it's self-explanatory. 
and everything inside there can use this as the keyword. And as we build everything, we can style it as well. So it makes sense. So let's first of all style the hero section as we just made it. So I'm going to copy the style from here and paste it around here at the bottom. Obviously, this is going to be a class and I want to make everything organized. So I'm going to put hero section like so. And let's start styling the hero. So for the hero, basically, I want it to be relative so we can position absolute stuff inside it, which we'll do in a sec. So let's do position relative. So this is going to have the height of 100 VH, which is basically going to take the full height. And I need a background color just so we can see as well. So background color var, and I'm going to use the primary color, which is quite dark. As you can see, this is already working. And just in case, because I'm going to have a video and I want the video to be stretched inside this, I might need to add an overflow hidden. Overflow hidden, just so we don't get a scroll bar here on the left and right. Now, the next thing that I can do is make the overlay or we can start with the video. Actually, let's start with the video and then we can add the overlay on top of it. So for the video, let's start by adding a video tag like so. This is actually not correct. What I'm going to do is video and inside here is where I'm going to add the source. So we're going to have a video and we want to actually autoplay this video. I mean, autoplay is probably not the best for uh, accessibility, but we're going to stop the music, but there won't be any music place in line equals place in line. We need to set autoplay to autoplay. Like so we need to set this to muted. Otherwise you want autoplay. So muted is equals muted and then loop. I want it to loop all the time so it doesn't stop. I could set the loading to lazy. Let's give it a class name of hero underscore underscore video. So it's tied up to this, but it's a separate class on its own. And now we need to add the source in here. So source and the source for this video is going to be source equals and is it, did I put in images? Yes, I did. So this is the source. I probably should have put underscores or something, but that should work as well. And then type equals video dash MP4. Okay. If I save, as you can see, we have the video. This is pretty cool. It's obviously kind of like not in the center just yet, but I can do that. It's auto playing, which is amazing. And yeah, let's style this now. So what I'm going to do is grab this hero video. First of all, go to main.css and inside here is where I'm going to do the hero video. Let's position this as absolute. And this is going to be top of 50%. I want to move it. And then we have left 50%. So minimum width needs to be set to 100%. Minimum height needs to be set to 100%. Width needs to be set to auto, height needs to be set to auto to make it. And now to bring it back, because as you can see, it's here in the corner, to bring it back and make it in the middle, we can just use the transform property. And then this is going to be translate X. Translate X. And this is going to be minus 50%. So you can see what's going to happen. And we also need translate Y in here. Translate Y and that's going to be 50% as well. Let me save. Okay. As you can see, this is now dead on center. The video is so now let's create the overlay so we can make this a little bit darker to do this. We can actually make the overlay here on top. And what I'm going to do is create a div with the class of hero underscore underscore overlay like so. And that's it. Let's now style it, copy, paste it in here. And what I can do for the overlay is let's position it absolute first of all. 
position absolute so we can start with left zero top zero uh, right zero and bottom zero like so the background color maybe we can do what can we do maybe we can do the and I'm going to do the primary color. Let's have a look at how this works. But I'm going to set the opacity to something like half of it. So opacity, we can do 0 0.5. Let's have a look. OK, that might not work. And I wonder whether this is because I need a Z index to 1. Or I can put Z index on this to 0. Okay, Hero overlay. Hero overlay. It's potentially because I need Z in this one. Yeah, I think that works. So Z in this one moves it at the front of the video and everything seems to be working. And now we can add some of the titles, uh, the paragraph. Let me do that super quickly. So for the title, let's go back to index.html. Let's make a little bit of space and we can add it in here. So let's do a div with the class name of H so this is going to take the full width. So I'm creating a container that is going to take the full height, sorry. And then I'm going to do a container. Maybe XXL. To be honest, I'm, I might create my own one in a second just to make it expand a little bit more. So let's give it, so let's leave as this for now. And then let's do position relative. Like so. This is also going to need a Z index. So I could either do it in here or I could give it a special class. So what should I do? Maybe we can do it as hero underscore underscore hero underscore underscore content. And I can do it inside here. So and then z, what did I say? Z index of one. So we'll see whether this works. We might need to change it. And then I'm going to create another diff in here and I'm going to cover this diff to flex. So we can do H100 again. And now I can use the align item center, open close. And then inside here, and then inside here, we can create another diff, which is going to hold everything and is going to be um, aligned in the middle of the screen. So for this, I could do uh, text white, text white like so close it and inside here is where I'm going to add the title. So for example, we can have H1 and this is going to be discover. Discover the taste of real coffee. Then we can have a little paragraph. Just going to paste some Laura Ipsum text for this. And as you can see, this is already looking good. And the last thing that I'm going to do is add a link href and this is going to be, let's not have it broken. Let's have it as class margin top of two btn dash this is going to be a button it's going to be a button large and the button i want it to be outline light so it's one of them ghost buttons uh obviously it's broken at the moment so light and then i need to give it a row of button because it's a link it's kind of like nice for accessibility to give it a row of button and now let's call it i don't know by now by now like so with a capital letter okay this is already looking good i might want to make this a little bit bigger to be honest so what i'm gonna do is this h1 i'm gonna do fw bold oh no class this needs a class name fw bold okay that's a little bit better and maybe i can do margin bottom four yep that's a little bit better for the Paragraph, let's do lead, which is going to make it a little bit bigger and better. And let's do margin bottom of four. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Let's have a look how this looks on desktop. So I'm going to open this. Um, I'm not extremely happy with this. So there are a couple of things that I want to fix here. I want to make the container a little bit bigger than it is. I want to give this max width so it's not like this because it doesn't look right. And potentially, I want to make this a little bit bigger. Let's start with the container first of all. So let's go back to the CSS and let's go to the top and let's create a custom container. So I'm going to copy a comment, paste it here, and let's do a custom container. 
for a custom container I'm gonna start with container and then custom that's it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the original one so the, as the food I wanted to have a width of 100% I want padding left to be one rem and padding right to be one rem could have done this uh, in one thing I guess and I want to do margin left and right to be auto so potentially I could have done this padding of one rem and then zero and then I could have the and I could do margin margin zero auto like so and I think that should do the job let me change this to container custom and let's have a look at it okay that's all good but this is 100% but for uh, oh did I mix up the padding I probably did so we have yeah I've mixed up the padding so it needs to be zero and then probably one my fault yeah okay so we have the padding this is in the middle it's all good and the but for bigger screens I actually wanted to have it a little bit inside so what I'm gonna do is a few media queries and in fact this might be a good time to paste all the media queries just so you can have them actually so I'm gonna copy them here is the media queries that you could use obviously you can modify them and add as much as you want but I'm gonna copy these ones for here for you to copy and paste if you wish and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna copy this one here and I'm gonna add in here so for 1200 I'm gonna do copy this and I'm gonna change it a little bit so for the width I'm gonna want this to be around 1140 this is in pixels and we don't change anything else that's absolutely fine in fact I can put this on one line and one more I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna change this to the next so to 1400 I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and one more I'm gonna put it as 1600 and then this is gonna be 1520 okay let's have a look. this looks a little bit better to me so let's have a look it's working on mobile and yeah that's pretty cool the only thing that I'm gonna change now is the heading to be a little bit bigger and put a max width on this container let's do that for this I'm gonna actually give it a unique class name so let's say we call it something like hero underscore underscore content width I'm gonna copy this go to the hero section here paste it and we need to give it a max width and the max width for this I'm gonna put as max width of 540 pixels like so let's have a look uh, that did not work maybe it didn't save save okay yeah that's working I'd much prefer this it's a little bit better and maybe we can make the text a little bit bigger so I'm just gonna nest I mean in the a in the hero section here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do h1 like so I could give it a unique uh, in fact let's do it let's do it probably so we can do hero underscore underscore heading like so and then I can change the heading to whatever I like and for this to be honest what I'm gonna do is add another media query so what I'm gonna do is add media and then this is gonna be min width min width of 1400 pixels and then I'm gonna put this inside here and just change the h1 to be a little bit bigger than it is so font font size and this can be 3.2 rem oh save did I break something yes that needs to be gone that needs to be gone that needs to be gone okay so I need to copy this go to the HTML here and add it to the heading so here heading and this is properly done now let's have a look okay this is much better and when we go down it goes to small 
And that's it. I don't mind this. I think this is a little bit better. This is obviously a VN and desktop, but if you wish the height of the screen to be smaller, you can always change that with media queries as well. But this is looking pretty cool. Let's now focus on this ex, uh, explore button here, which is going to move everything. If you click on it, it's going to go down to this section. So to do this, let's go back in here. Let's tidy things up first of all, like so. And let's do a link. So href, and this is going to be, let's go, let's scroll down like so. And let's give it a class name of hero underscore underscore scroll BDN and then I can put inside here something like explore and we're going to need an icon of arrow down so I already know which one this is I'm going to copy it and paste it so b b i dash arrow down short and now we can style this super quickly I'm going to grab the class name go here at the bottom and then let's position this at the bottom and let's position it absolute. So to do this, position absolute, and then we can do left 50%, uh, bottom, it's gonna be somewhere around 30 pixels. Let's do transform to bring it back to the center, translate X minus 50%. Then the Z index might need to go up a little bit. Let's do, let's do a color of var, let's do a color of var dash dash bootstrap light, which is a very light color. I think it might be just white to be fair. And let's display this as flex because we have two elements in there and let's do it as flex direction column and then align item center and text decoration, whoops, text decoration set to none, not orange none okay what else do we need um so let me have a look whether this works first of all it's nice to test okay this is perfect uh the hover is not great i can change this as well so i can copy this and do hover and on hover i can do color in fact i'm gonna copy this one here it's not gonna be a big hover that's absolutely fine let me go back. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. We could change it to a slightly opaque color or maybe like even do the opacity. Opacity. Opacity of 0 0.8. I don't know. Something like this would do. And let's add a little bit of animation. Why not? But let's add it to the arrow instead. So the arrow, we can grab this BI class name. So we, what we can do is, whoops. So what we can do is grab this hero, hero scroll BTN and we nest the BI inside it and now we can animate it. So let's say transition delay, transition and we say, whoops, that needs to be delay and we do 0 0.8 seconds. And then let's say animation, which we're going to have to grant. Let's call it a bounce or something like that. One second, infinite. And then alternative. Let's create this animation super quickly with keyframes, add keyframes, and then the identifier is bounce. And then inside here, we're gonna do from, transform, translate Y, which is up and down basically. And this is gonna be zero pixels. And then, oh, sorry, this needs to be from, from. And then we need to put two and this is going to be transform and then translate Y minus 10 pixels like so. And hopefully if we go back, is it working? Did I save it? I have too many uh, of them open. Um, oh, sorry. This is a class name. That's why. So but dot hopefully oh here we go this is pretty cool real real nice animation and now we just need to link it to the next section which we actually haven't created yet and let's create it and let's link it so to link this we've already given it a link here which is good but we just need to create this anchor link somewhere so 
I'm just going to create it below here and we should be good to go. The anchor can be just a ID and we copy the ID from here, scroll down like so and we close it. That's it. Hopefully this should work, but I'm not sure. We probably don't have, yeah, we don't have anything just yet. So let me quickly add something. So and now one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is going to work now. Boom. Cool. That's pretty cool. If you want the animation to be smooth as well, what we can do, if you go to main.css and let's do it at the top. So maybe under the root here, we can do, uh, let's put HTML and we can do scroll behavior and we can set this to smooth like so. And now it would be nice. We'll test it in a minute, but it would be the animation will be a lot smoother now because we don't have much, many things at the bottom. We can't really uh, see the animation very well, but it should be much smoother now, I believe. And if we test this on mobile super quickly, you will see that it's all working quite well. And we can inspect it, test the mobile like so. And yeah, pretty cool. Let's focus on the next section now. Let's focus on the next section, which is this one here. And this is pretty much going to repeat a few times. So one, two, three, and we just have the image swapped on this one here, which is absolutely fine. So let's do that. All right, let's focus on the next section now. So I'm going to remove all this. Let's make a little comment in here. So I'm going to say section one start like so. And we should be good to go. Also, I forgot to close this one here. So let me close it, hero, end. So let's start by opening a section tag and then closing it. And then this section is going to have a couple of classes. So let's go with first one. I'm going to name this one something. So let's call it step or something like that, just because we have step one, step two, and step three. So I'm just going to call it steps. We can add the custom container that we created earlier. So container dash custom, and I'm going to do padding, padding Y, which is top and bottom to be four. Now, I don't think that this is going to be good enough. So I might make myself, I'm wondering whether to, you know what, I'm going to add the padding to the steps on its own because four won't be enough. So what I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to add a div with a class name of row. And then inside this div is where we're going to add two columns. One is going to be for the image and one is going to be for the actual text. So the first one, so let's create a column with 12. So basically on mobile, we want the first column to be full width. Then on slightly bigger screens, which is the next uh, media query, co-sm, small, I want it to go to six. So because we have 12 columns, I want when we go up, this to take half of the screen and, and then I'm going to have another column that's going to take the other half. So I hope that makes sense. And I want to convert this to a flex box as well. So the MD on medium queries flex, because I want to justify the content in the middle when we are above this media query. I'll show you in a second. So justify dash content, and then this is going to be MD center. So basically don't want it when it's small. I don't want it to be justified center. That's all. And now let's add the image. So this is going to be image source, and this is going to be image slash. And the first one is going to be the coffee flavor one. We're going to have to add an old tag of coffee, coffee flavor, something like this. Don't forget to add your uh, width, which is 533, I believe. Is it 533 or 553? 553, I believe. Let's have a look. So it's 553. And then the height is going to be 746. 746, like so, and close. We can make this as loading lazy, of course. So when we open the website, until we scroll, this won't be loaded, which means that our website is going to load fast. And then when we scroll down, this is going to load immediately, which is good. 
um, we can actually close this. So if I save this, let's have a look at what we get. Uh, we get the image in here. Obviously, I'm going to add some paddings in a second, but that's looking good. It's taken, it's kind of like in the middle. And if I go down, it's at the top and it's all looking good. So we'll figure out the rest in a sec. So let's add the second column. So this is going to be very similar, actually. So we're going to have a div with the class name of call 12. Then when we go up, I want it to be called small six. So they're kind of like two columns you'll see side by side. And then I want to, let me close this so it doesn't look bad. And then I want to align this self to center. And I want to justify content MD center. Is this going to work? Probably. Think about it. I don't know if I needed the MD flexing here. We'll have a look in a second. But that's all working good. And now let's add some of the content. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add one more div so I can kind of like constrain the width of this. So I'm going to do a div with the class name of steps underscore underscore content width. Like so, let's close it. And inside here, I can add, I don't know whether this to be. I mean, I can add in a paragraph, I guess, or I can add in a div. Um, maybe let's let's just leave this paragraph. I mean, technically speaking, it's not really a paragraph. So I wonder if it's just better to add it as a div or something or a span. You know, let's add it as a span. I think that would do. Span, span. Here we go. And then h1. For this h1, we're going to have a class of h2 because I wanted to make it slightly smaller than the h1 tag but I still want it to be h1 because uh, this is a section so it can have its own h1 then inside here I'm going to push everything below so what margin bottom with four and let's say amazing coffee flavor then after this we're going to put a paragraph and this is going to have a class name of margin margin bottom of four again and I'm going to put some lorem ipsum in here, just like so. And last but not least, let's create a link. And this link is going to be empty just because we don't have anything to link it to. And let's say read more. And I'm going to add a, an icon here. So this icon is going to be I class of BI BI arrow right. I think that's it. Okay. Save this. And let's have a look at how this looks. That's all looking pretty good. Uh, if we go down, it's still looking pretty good. Obviously, we're going to need some space in here, but that's not too bad. Let me fix that super quickly if I can. So on the image itself, on the image itself, I think I forgot to make it responsive. So what I can do is add a class to it. And let's say image fluid. And padding bottom can be four. And maybe I can give it a custom class just because on mobile, the image is huge. I mean, this is huge on mobile. So maybe I can give it a class so I can kind of like still keep it nice, but cut off some of it. So let's do that. I think that's a good idea. So pp4 and steps underscore underscore section. Maybe thumbnail. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Padding button of added. Yep, that's looking good. And now I can start styling it. Let's style this image first of all. Actually, no, let's start from the section and give it a little bit of padding. So steps, that's gonna be somewhere at the bottom. So let's do it here. Uh, let's say, let me copy a comment. Did I not see a comment? Hero. It's absolutely fine. Let's tidy it up. Okay. So this is going to be steps section. Like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a padding of top, maybe 40 pixels. And you know what? Let's give it a padding of top and bottom 40 pixels for mobile. So, so zero. And let's have a look how this looks like. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Um, we do need a container potentially. Did I add one? Uh, 
that may help with that. Okay. I don't think that we can say this. Like, okay, um, the this is actually not going to be a good idea. So this is actually going to break the container pattern. So if you see, there is no pattern now. So what I'm going to have to do instead is I'm going to do pattern dash top of 40 pixels, and I'm going to do padding dash bottom of 40 pixels like so hopefully that okay that fixes pretty much everything now but i'm gonna do another media query for desktop or bigger screens where we have a little bit more space in here because that's just not enough so what i'm gonna do let's say we do a media query inside here i'm gonna do at media and this is gonna be min with minimum width of five four four pixels and then inside here what I'm going to do is grab this and just change the values to maybe I think 80 might be a good one okay let's have a look yep that's much much better if I scroll if I go down to mobile as you can see it's smaller if you go up it's a lot bigger I think I like that so the next problem that we're having is this image so we can start this super quickly as well we have this container here which is good and I also gave this image a class name of steps underscore underscore section thumbnail. So what I'm going to do is grab this and I'm going to modify it with CSS a little bit for mobile. So I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to say height. I want it to be around 140 pixels and I want the object to be fit and to cover, not contain, cover. Okay, so now... As you can see, this is this is shrinking down the image, but the aspect ratio is still good. The image is kind of like covering everything, which is good. So it's not like squished, if you know what I mean. This is perfect. Now there are some other options, but cover is probably the best one in this scenario, I think. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. But obviously now we're gonna have a problem because on desktop still look the same. So I'm gonna have to reset it. I'm gonna grab, let's just grab this media query here. And in fact, we could just use it. So I'm going to grab this and put it in here and I'm going to reset the height to be auto like so. And I can move this media query at the bottom actually. Whoops, and we're done. Let's have a look. Okay, that's working. If we go down, it's squished and so on. Uh, so that's almost done. The only thing that I don't like now is that this is actually taking the full width of the column, which is fine. But I feel like it's going to look a lot better if we actually cut it around here. So that's why I gave it a class name of, where is it? Um, steps, whoops. Steps content width. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it in here. Steps content width. And this could be... This could be maybe max width around 456 pixels and I can say that the margin is zero auto so we can have it every time in the middle. Okay, much, much better, much, much cleaner. Um, a lot of white space now. Okay, I'm starting to think that this isn't doing much and it might be because of the image. So what I could do is potentially give this image a margin zero to center it. Let's have a look whether this is going to work. So the image is called steps thumbnail. And if I do margin zero auto, hopefully that, yeah, that has it in the middle. That's a little bit better, I think. If I go down. Yeah, that's working well now. Okay, small issue there. Uh, I'm not so sure whether we actually need the flex do we let's have a look mm, yeah no maybe we can do yeah i have a feeling that this doesn't seem to be doing anything i don't know why i added it okay that's already looking good so what i'm gonna do now is duplicate this section give it a different background color and just swap them around let's have a look at how we can do that so i'm gonna oops so i'm gonna copy the whole section from here let me actually comment it first of all, section one and I'm going to copy the entire section, paste in here and I want to swap the places of this column and this column here. 
So what we can do is on the column here, I can just say order order dash sm one. Save this and hopefully they will be flipped. Yep, as you can see, they're flipped. Obviously, I need to change the content, the image, and so on. So what I'm going to do is do that. So I'm going to do that super quickly. Two, this is going to be, I'm going to copy some text here. Uh, surprising health benefits. I'm going to leave everything else as it is. Uh, and this JPEG needs to be changed to two health benefits like so. Save it. I can change the old text as well. By the way, all the images are the same size when I was uh, exporting them. I make sure that they're the same size, so don't worry about that. And we are good. Now, only one thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to create a little modifier so I can change the background to this. So let's say we want to give this a custom background. I'm going to say steps dash dash maybe, I don't know, background. I think that would do. And then let's go to steps do it in here and we can do dash dash background and we can give it a background color so i'm not so sure which background color to give it i'm thinking maybe something like this but a little bit coffee like so let's do background color and then i'm gonna change it so maybe uh, maybe a little bit yellowy like that i think that would be nice Save it. Save this. Let's have a look. Oh, this is not good. But let's change it to this one. Let's have a look how it looks. Uh, I'm not sure if I like it that much. All right, the color is going to be FE F8 F9. It's kind of like a coffee, white, creamy color. So that's why I'm going to do it. And if I go back, here it is. But this is looking a little bit odd. And I know why this is happening. This is happening because actually put the container custom on the actual section so basically this is now constrained to the size of this container custom and instead what i need to do is put wrap everything inside this so like so but that didn't work so i'm gonna have to type i guess and that's it and i'm gonna wrap everything inside this container custom in here indent a little bit indent it and hopefully that should solve all problem yep as you can see now we have it full width and this is looking a lot better it's also using the same styles as the one above because we copied it and it's looking pretty good so it's fully responsive now the next one i'm going to do is copy this one here again and do the next section so i'm going to copy this section here and paste in here so I'm not going to do much with this one. What we need to change is this to free. And I just need to change some of the content. So I'm going to say essential nutrients in here. Lauren Epsom is fine. What else do I need? The image needs to be changed. So that's going to be free. Free. Essential. Yep. Oh, no, this is the small one. So I need the free essential nutrients. That's it. Maybe we can change this as well. So and we're good to go. Let's have a look at what happens. Okay, we have we have three sections. So if I click on this, this goes down. One, two, three. Perfect. The last thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one more section with three columns, and then I'm gonna finish off with the footer. So the next section we're gonna create in here. I didn't properly design this one, I kind of like throw uh, some containers around, but I'm going to attempt to make it a little bit better than the design and I'm going to do slightly different footer as well. So let's have a look. I don't know what to call this section, but let's call it, uh, let's give it a comment first of all. So section with three calls, columns. <laughs> I think that would be fine. And then let's start building it. So I'm going to have a section. This section is going to have a class name of BG dark. This is the background dark color. And then I want the text inside to be obviously white so we can read it. And then I want PY, which is padding top and bottom to be four. So that's all looking good. 
the inside here I'm gonna add my custom container so custom container like so and inside here and in fact I'm gonna give this a margin y of 4 so we have a little bit more space around and then inside here I'm gonna be creating the row with the columns so row and then inside the row let's create the columns so we're gonna have column one which is gonna take 12 on mobile and then when we go up we're gonna have col small of four with margin bottom of four that's it inside here i'm gonna add a smaller image so i'm gonna do an image and then this is gonna be source image and then this is gonna be the first image but small of course we're gonna have an old tag which is coffee flavor we're gonna have width of 441 for this one and a height of 258 and i'm gonna have it as loading lazy like so and also let's add some classes to it so i'm gonna add a class and this is gonna have a class of margin bottom four margin bottom four and then image fluid like so that's it so let's add a a tree in here so i'm gonna say amazing coffee flavor so then i'm gonna put a paragraph with some lorem ipsum and that's it if i save this and go down let's see what we get okay uh something is wrong but most of it it's working so let's have a look at what we've done uh custom no okay this is what's wrong so container needs to be first container custom yeah that's that's working now i need to remove this let's go to the bottom yep that's fine now i can create two more and that should work really well so let me copy this and paste it it's wise and i can change the images super quickly so this is going to be two small one the old text needs to change to have benefits i guess so uh, I'm going to change this to health benefits as well. Something like this. That's absolutely fine. And then for the last one, what do we have? We have picture number three, which is the small one here. And we can change the old text to be essential nutrients. Like so. And I can actually copy this paste it inside here and I can leave the rest I think that's going to be all right so this is looking pretty uh, if I go down you will see it works on mobile and then it breaks up the last thing that I'm going to do is the footer so that's going to be super simple I think for the footer let's first of all comment this as well and let's paste in here so end and for the footer, I'm gonna do this is obvious, but but why not? I'm gonna add a footer here with an HTML5 footer tag, and then I'm gonna add a class to it with which I'm gonna call footer. And then I'm gonna give it a background color of dark and text white, just like above that's absolutely fine inside here i'm gonna create my trusty container so container custom i'm gonna oops that needed to be a div so div with the class name of container custom and and then inside here i'm gonna do the flex to display a flex justify content between because you will see uh, the content, some of the content is going to be on the left side and the other is going to be on the right side, just like the header, I guess. And then I'm going to align all the items to be kind of like in the middle, in the center. You'll see in sec, align items center. And then padding 
top and bottom, let's say three, and then border highlight to the top. Okay, I think I might need to do that manually, the border highlighting. I'm going to do the border highlight manually in a second. Now I'm going to create kind of like two columns. So the first one is going to be co-md4- uh, sorry, dflex and then dot align dash items dash center and that's going to add all of the classes for me like so. I should have done that on all of them to be honest and then I can do a href and then put that so this is going to be linked to the home page like so. So this is going to have a class name of margin end and this is going to be set to two. And then this is going to be text muted, which is going to be kind of like, it's going to look better, I think. And then we can add an icon here. I'm going to add uh, kind of like a cup icon. So I class bootstrap icons, bootstrap icons, cup. I think that's going to look pretty cool. And I can close this and then we can just say in a span, we can create maybe let's say class text. Oh no, I've already got the text muted, so it's fine. So let's say in a span we can do ampersand copy for the copyright symbol and 2021. Or shall we put it 2022? Just because we are almost there now. And gorilla copy. like so, um, save this. And then the other one that I'm going to do instead of a column, I'm going to use a URL. And to be honest, I think I kind of copied one of the example for this, but I modified it quite a lot. So if you go to examples in Bootstrap, oops, now examples here, you will see that they have a lot of examples that you can use. And I think I kind of, I'm not sure now, I think I copied this one maybe and I modified it. But yeah, you can copy the, the ones from here and modify them yourself. So let me just finish this super quickly. So this is going to have a class of nav call margin, uh, sorry, call medium for, and I'm going to justify content to the end. And then list, I want it to be unstyled. And I'm going to convert this to a flex box with the text of white, like so. Uh, inside here, of course, we're going to create a few lists. So let's create a, the first one with the class name of uh, margin start of free. And then inside here, we can create a link href. And then, oops, that doesn't look good. Okay, href. Uh, this can be empty. And I'm going to put a class name for it. So class, this is going to be text muted. And then what else do we need? And then maybe an icon. So I'm going to put an icon here. I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to change this bootstrap icon to bootstrap Twitter. And we are good. Let me have a look at what we get. Okay, that's, that's almost there. I mean, this doesn't need to be underlined and this needs to change the text to white. We'll have like, so text white is here. That's fine. Text muted is fine. Okay, let's let's just copy this two more times and we'll figure out. So this is going to be Instagram. And this is going to be Facebook. Like so um, I don't want this to be underlined. I wonder if I give it text muted whether this is going to work. Let's have a look. Potentially. On this, let's just copy and put text decoration. Oops. Text decoration none. I think that's going to fix it. And do we have the problem in the other ones? No, they're fine. And, and let's just have a look at how we can fix the icon super quickly. So there are links. Uh, text white. That should usually fix it. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Do I need to put it here? Oh, uh, you know what it is. It's basically I've misspelled text muted. Okay, so let me replace everywhere. That's why it wasn't working. Um, and we probably don't need this. I can just put text muted. 
And that's it. Let's have a look now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do need the decoration on this one then. So text decoration and then hopefully that will fix my issue now. All right. That's fixing the issue. It's all good. Let's test this super quickly on mobile. If we go down, it's working. I think, yeah, that's pretty good. One more thing. I forgot the line here, which I put as border highlight. So I'm going to copy this and let's create a footer one. So, and then, and then what I'm going to do is put dot border highlight and I'm going to copy this, tidy things up. So this is going to be footer like so. And for this one here, I'm going to say border top. You can do this with bootstrap, by the way, pixel solid. And I'm just going to do var dash dash and then primary color highlight, which we created earlier in this tutorial. And that should be the end. Here we go. It's looking nice. And that's pretty much everything from this tutorial. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you find it useful. If you did, smash the like button. Please comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.